Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, move over Jeremy Paxman, it's the University Challenge and this time the students have got guns. There's a bit of a boar theme this week. Roy Lupton and sporting rifle expert Tim Pillbeam are out to find the best rifle for a running target. First, they're blonde, they're French and they're over here digging up our countryside. We're out to shoot a British wild boar, it's Team Wild TV. British wild boar hunting is only available to a privileged few. Simon Barr is one of them. He lives in Sussex and has boar on his ground. And if you need proof, check out the turf wars all over this pasture. And if you need more proof, here are the trail cam shots from the wood next door. Can you see the boar print yeah. in there quite clearly? That's a pretty fresh track right there. Very fresh. If you look at the, the muds, you can see my prints here. That's very, very fresh. Uh, and this is absolutely why we're here this evening to try and stop them from doing this. Crikey. But the field's kind of covered in patches like this. It is, yeah. It is. Um, this has been going on for some time and the farmer's about to put lambs out here. And we need to make sure they've got some grass left to feed on. So we're heading out tonight to see if I can get my first British wild boar. Shooting them here sparks plenty of controversy. Firstly, should you control them? Then if so, how do you do it? Night vision or under moonlight? Then there's the issue of a season. Some shooters impose their own, others are less choosy. Simon has had plenty of practice debating the issues and getting to know the Sussex pigs. On this particular area, I think we've probably got about two groups, uh, one of four or five animals and another one of about six animals. And there's a couple of large boar as well that are moving around, but they tend to be more transient. So what's the main tactic really when it comes to controlling the numbers? Do you take the older ones or do you prefer to take the smaller ones? We would always go, uh, we would always try and manage the younger animals out of the population first. Um, for me, it's about balancing uh, the damage, the impact of the animals with my needs as a sportsman and the, the needs of the landowners locally. Are, are these the same sort of wild boar that you'd find elsewhere in Europe? They've been genetically tested by DEFRA as French wild boar. Um, what is quite unusual about the population here is that we've got a high frequency of leucism, and leucism's a pigmentation. Uh, deficiency, so they look almost albino. Um, I've seen it in boar in France, uh, but maybe one in a hundred, perhaps less than that. In Sussex, we've got perhaps a frequency of one in three, and I know the particular group we're going to be looking at this evening, there's a group of five leucistic boar, which is very, very unusual. So um, the Sussex boar have got quite a quirk about them. This shy, intelligent beast deserves respect, but many, including the British government, hold its welfare at arm's length. Bewilderingly, they've pretty much got the same rights as a grey squirrel. Boar aren't classified as a game species. They are um, halfway between uh, an invasive non-native and vermin. So they've pretty much got the same rights as a grey squirrel. Mm. Uh, and for something that, you know, body mass wise goes to larger than a red stag, I think that's you know, definitely to look at that and start giving them some protection, proper protection. Time is marching on. And if there's any chance of shooting a boar tonight, we need to get kitted up. So Simon, can I run through quickly um, the kit that we're going to be using tonight then? Yeah, sure. This is a Blaza R8 Professional with synthetic stock uh, in 308 calibre. Um, excellent, very, very accurate, very reliable. It's got the Blaza straight pull action, which is a uh, very well uh, German designed piece of kit. Um, I'm using a Trident moderator, which has been designed in the UK and manufactured in the UK. Yeah, I've heard a lot about these, a mod modular system. Very, very good. It's got an integrated muzzle brake as well, so reduces recoil massively. Um, very, very good piece of kit, very lightweight. Um, and then for the optics, I'm using a Pulsar Digisight N550. Um, they're not new onto the market. They've been available for a couple of years. Um, it took night vision from, say, two and a half grand for the image intensifiers down to a thousand pound or thereabouts entry level point. Yeah. So um, really revolutionized the night vision market and I'm a big fan. We make our way to the hide. We have a superb view of the lower field and the feed station. Simon has been putting down wheat to concentrate the boar damage and put the boar in a safe shooting position. 
So Simon, it looks like there, there's quite a lot of activity around here. Huge amount of activity, everything that went down yesterday, and I can see some birds have been here. All the food that went down yesterday is gone, uh, which is a very, very good sign. Those rocks that uh, we tend to kick those over the food, they've been moved around from where they were last night. So very good sign that we've got a group uh, feeding on here. So let's hope they come early. Yeah. So this is extremely exciting. Clearly Simon knows an awful lot about what he's, uh, what he's talking about. Uh, and we can see there's plenty of activity here. So of all the things I wanted to shoot in the UK, wild boar is right there at the top of the list. So uh, we're gonna go sit back in the blind there, probably hopefully three or four hours and be able to see something. So yeah, very excited. With an hour left before the sun goes down, we get into the temporary hide and talk through the game plan. We're using Lapua Mega, 150 grain, 308. Uh, absolutely superb round for boar shooting. They're not overly fast, there's not a massive amount of meat damage, but there's enough of a punch there with a 30 calibre bullet to do the job, so they're okay. fantastic. So whereabouts are we uh, shooting? We won't be engaging them until they get to the feed station. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a safe backstop until about 80 yards away, um, the way the ground rolls away from this hide. So we'll be shooting them when they get to the feed station only. Okay, cool. Simon is hopeful we'll get something, especially having photographed two groups of pigs just a few days ago. With a bit of a weight on our hands, we talked through another hot potato. To night sight or not to night sight? I actually personally believe um, I have a responsibility as a hunter to dispatch the animal as humanely and as efficiently as I can do. And guessing where to put the bullet with a day scope at night, I think is slightly irresponsible. So the hunt is exactly the same. The sport is exactly the same. And anybody that tells me that it's not as romantic, I think is being reckless and they should be using night vision. The other thing is if you're shooting under moonlight, it limits you to about four days a month with night vision. If you've got a management objective like we've got tonight, you can come out whenever you want to and you can deal with the problem if it arises. So I think it has massive applications. If you want to do something romantic, go and shoot a stag in Scotland. Yeah, uh, my wife wouldn't consider this to be very romantic, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're in for a good night, Ian. Are they? We hear pigs, but we don't see them. And it looks like I'm going to have to hand the baton over to Simon. No success last night, so we're uh, very hopeful that with different weather conditions today, they might come. Um, day three in the Big Brother hide. We've tried four nights out. Um, the weather's changed this evening. Hunting these animals is not easy, and it takes another three outings before Simon finally strikes leucistic gold. There are five boar in the field. They've just come out from the woodland. Four days of waiting has paid off. They're all about the same size, and this is the group that I've seen before. These are all leucistic. It's impossible to tell whether they're male or female. They're not old enough to see any difference. There's no tusks visible and no pizzle visible. They're roughly the same size. There's one that looks a little bit bigger. Absolutely amazing to see them, though. Incredible creatures. They've already started to damage the field since they've come out. I don't have a safe shot when they're next to the woodland edge. I'm going to have to wait for them to come into the middle of the field. They're very bunched together. I don't think I'm going to be able to shoot them where they are. Okay, one of them seems to be splitting away from the rest of them. I can't tell if it's male or female. They all look the same size. I'm going to have to take the one that presents the safest shot and is away from the other animals. It's slightly quartering. I'm going to have to go through the shoulder. The boar is hit and it runs. Simon searches with the pulsar and picks it up about 80 yards to the left. The heart and lung shot is good and it's done its job. He's taken a young female. Simon would have preferred a male but they were all of a similar size and he needed to make a dent in this particular group. She's in good condition and he gralics her before heading for the chiller. Also ensuring to take a sample of diaphragm to be sent for analysis for a nasty parasitic nematode called trichinella. At the chiller, we have a chance to take a proper look at this amazing, truly wild, wild boar. If it were a farmyard pig, a domestic pig, it had a curly tail, you would see spotting on the, um, on the, on the fur, on the bristles. Um, the, the head shape is different. The top of the ears curl over. Um, and you know, this is absolutely as wild as they get. So um, 
yeah, beautiful animal. Uh, I quite like them in this colour. I think they're, they're quite unique looking. Um, now I've given it a bit of a clean off. You can see the, the colour. Obviously, they're covered in mud a lot of the time where they've been wallowing, but this has been cleaned off a little bit, and you can really see it's, you know, it's blonde. <laughs> it's a blonde pig. It's taken a lot of work, but Simon and the farmer are very happy. Of course, I like shooting them for, for sport. It's, it's good fun. I like the meat massively. But, you know, uh, when you hear farmers saying, you know, I just want everything off the ground, I want to wipe them out, it's, it's, it's upsetting, really. Um, but it's the same, you know, there's always a conflict with wildlife and agriculture, and it's just managing that and being responsible and doing it in such a way that um, uh, everything has a, a good balance and has a chance to live and also has a chance to grow. So I think that's obviously the issue with farmers. British wild boar are back in the UK. And the more we're sensible about managing them, the more chance that it won't just be the privileged few who get to enjoy their own dose of boar fever. If you're interested in wild boar, why not look at our other films on the subject? We've been out in the snow after British wild boar and we've been as far as Croatia looking at different wild boar management techniques. Now from pigs to pure ham, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Staying with boar and are they becoming bolder as they extend their range? This photograph was taken by sporting shooter sales manager James Westbrook as he travelled through the lanes of Buckinghamshire. These road hogs don't appear to have a care in the world as they wander past. Do you want to see a master of foxhounds truly under pressure? The third annual Ascot Countryside Race Day will take place on the 1st of April 2012. The race day will kick off in fine style with a Masters Race for Repeal, featuring nine Masters in a race for the glory of their hunt. You can view the competing Masters and sponsor them on the Countryside Alliance website, countryside-alliance.org.uk. The RSPCA has forced residents in Lake Windermere to call off the cull of 200 Canada geese that are plaguing the beauty spot. Chief Executive Gavin Grant threatened legal action against shooters, saying they had to find alternative measures and added that a cull would be a bloody stain on Windermere. Next up, and shooting is hitting pop art. Australian pop artist Linton Marr has produced a series of painting celebrating British game shooting using cartridge cases and shot. Pheasant walking is acrylic painted shotgun pellets on perspex the artist says it's hard to look past the death implied by all the empty cartridges. That's Grouse, the British show, is on at the Contemporary Modern Australian Art Gallery in London from the 22nd to 29th of May. And finally, a picture story that's doing the rounds on the internet. An angler in the Alaskan wilderness left bait and food in his aeroplane. This attracted a local bear who did this to the plane in his efforts to find the food. Undaunted, the pilot used his radio and had another pilot bring him two new tyres, sheet plastic and loads of duct tape. He patched the plane together and flew it home. The bare necessities there. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. A man at ease with his environment there. Now, you're probably enthusiastic about bringing home your own wild bacon. Well, Roy Lupton and Tim Pilbeam have been trying out a few shooters. Some thought it would never happen, brokered by Field Sports Channel, a meeting between sporting journalists from both sides of the tracks. Tim Pilbeam, a licensed rifle reviewer from Sporting Rifle, and Roy Lupton, Field Sports Channel's stalwart and foxing expert for Sporting Shooter magazine. There are two reasons for this momentous day. To practice shooting at a running boar and for Tim and Roy to choose the rifle they take with them on their fantasy hunting trip. There's quite a collection of hardware which is safely stowed in the almighty foxing and rabbiting machine we've already had the pleasure of playing with before. Well, no, thank you very much for inviting me down today. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So uh, we're going to go out and have a bit of a play. Yeah, I think what we do, Roy, today is um, we'll practice shooting running boar, but what we do, we start with a, a 2-2 centrefire, yep. which is quite a bit slower than a normal rifle, centrefire rifle. Then what I'm trying to do today, we work from the 22 all the way through 
to the big boys' toys, and I've got some Excellent. quite interesting bits of kit in there. <laughs> Super, but I, you've been having a bit of practice before well, I got I've, here. I've sneaked a half a dozen down, <laughs> down, down, down the range because uh, <laughs> some of them are quite uh, quite uh, powerful rifles, and also they need to be zeroed in, so right. make sure they actually are 100% zeroed in at 100 yards to make sure we're actually perfectly safe in what we're trying to do today. Okay, so you actually reckon we're going to hit something at 100 yards? Well, I hope so. I, I do as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah. No, that was it. We've only done it with air rifles so far, so this is a bit of a, uh, an up and coming. So what, what kit have we got today then, you reckon? Well, I think we've got about £30,000 worth of rifles here. I think that's um, enough to play yeah, with. Well, I suppose, yeah, but I suppose yeah, twenty twenty thousand pounds for the rifles and, and ten thousand pounds for the optics. So right. We are we're, we're well kitted up. We've got all the gear. And no idea. And no idea. <laughs> so uh, excellent. It, should, it could be quite an interesting day actually. Superb. We're looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah. We rumble down to Tim's practice area and prepare for an afternoon's fun in the sun. Ian is set the task of dressing the boar. We're lucky in that we have two remote-controlled cars. Tim's is a two-wheel drive, 60 quid purchase from eBay, but the battery is a tad temperamental, whereas Roy has £200 worth of 4x4 off-roader that's running the gauntlet in front of very powerful rifles. It's almost tempting fate. Making their way to the shooting zone, they're looking the part. Tim gives the pigs a touch-up and talks Roy through the shooting etiquette of this simulated game day. So Roy, we've got uh, we're shooting the wild ball between two fence uh, panels right. for safety reasons only. Behind the uh, uh, ball, we've got a ten-foot bund yep. safety, so we're in full safety. Um, so I'm happy with everything we're trying to do today. Okay. Um, regards to our ball, here we go. So what are we going to do here? So we've got a, we've got you've got two markers either side. So when the ball's coming back in, yeah, time. that's right. So we go backwards and forwards. Um, so, I mean, obviously we've got some old shots here, but um, so we're going to respray and uh, so we should be able to pick it up. That's right. After every uh, batch of shots, we'll actually put some paint down and right. we'll see exactly where the bullets are gone. Okay. I've marked it um, here. Very often the wild boar, 50 odd yards away, 100 yards away, we're actually giving it a bit of lead. We're actually aiming yep, either aiming. at the neck, at the nose or in front of the nose. And that's what we're trying to establish today is how much lead we've we are here, going to shoot. Depending on the calibre. Yeah, so depending on the calibre. The 2-2 two -two bullet runs at about 900 feet per second and the centre fires right to 3,000 feet per second. So there's a quite a large uh, variety in um, velocities of bullets. So therefore yep. that is very, very important for, for lead. Okay. And what distance have we got here to shoot in between? I think we've got about 30 yards maximum. It, so it's going to be quick shooting? Quite, quite quick shooting. In a way. That's right. So uh, and we'll see what, uh, what happens today. <laughs> First up, it's the 2-2, just to get the eye in. Not bad, but let's move up through the calibres. Roy's rebarrelled ticker 22-250 is not ideal with the high magnification optic on top, but the pig is being hit soundly by Roy and Tim. Unfortunately, Tim's car needs a bit of a charge, and it hasn't been used yet. Stepping up to the 243, and Tim is using a relative newcomer to the UK bullet market. Gecko from Ruag is up to 25% cheaper and is sold in batches of 50. So what round are we going up to now? This is 243, um, 105 grain, but it goes out about 3,000 feet per second. So, right. yeah, so it's uh, still quite a chunky round, but uh, we'll see how it, uh, how it performs on our, on our piggy. For this round, he's using a new Savage on the market for about 500 pounds. On top is a red dot sight that many continental shooters use for boar. Here's the German princeling we featured before shooting quite a lot of animals in one go with a Zauer rifle and aim point red dot sight. The combination works well and the shots are in the right place with very little lead at 50 to 60 yards. It's so good, you can see with both rifles or the scope you're very limited to your field of view but with the, with the red dot, it's completely open. You just watch it going across there. It's absolutely brilliant. So where, where were you aiming on that one? What lead were you giving? I was aiming roughly around here. Wasn't giving much lead at all. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Ian is keen to have a go with the red dot and with his first shot of the day, he shoots the car. Oh dearie me. No tittering at the back, please. <laughs> That's not funny. Oh well, with some of the finest mechanical minds on hand, the four-wheel drive becomes two-wheel drive and it lives again. Good job as we're now moving on to the larger bore calibres. Again, Tim loads the Gecko ammo into his very nice Mauser with Zeiss scope. A good combo to cover all eventualities. This is a Mauser Strutzen in grade 6 walnut. Absolutely beautiful. 
uh, 6,000 pounds worth and also we got a, a beautiful uh, very point Zeiss two to two and a half to ten by fifty uh, with illuminated reticle absolutely superb um, probably all-round scope um, many would use that on, on running bore but uh, yeah it's, it's a and the good thing about that is if you were sitting in a high seat as well you know you've got a, a tool for, for both jobs haven't you yeah that's right so it's, it's, a, good, it's a good all-round stalking and wild boar scope not bad Practice makes perfect, and again, Tim and Roy are definitely getting the hang of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. One on the top as well. Yeah. So I, I was aiming about, what about you, Roy? I was actually aiming, aiming about there. About there, yeah. Yeah. It's now the turn of another Mauser, but in 8x68S. And this is the bit I've been waiting for followed by Roy's new Chapuis double rifle. Now for Frankenstein's monster, where a shotgun is not quite a shotgun and a rifle is not quite a rifle. So he takes two shotgun shells and a seven millimeter bullet underneath it. And today we're using single uh, solid slugs, only available on a firearm certificate. Very often these are used in America uh, and also in Europe for running bore and for quite a few other antelope, but uh, they're quite commonly used, that's all. So we'll see how it goes today. Tim's first few efforts make a fair-sized hole in the backside of the oh. bore. With a slight change of lead, the bore is getting the solid slug where it's needed. After Roy's go, it's Ray! starting to look like Swiss cheese. He all that's left is the balloon. With just hey, two more guns that. to go, it's a rifle barreled shotgun, right. very it, popular yeah. in the United Sorry. States. OK, we're moving on to something very unusual now. We've got a Harrington & Richardson uh, shotgun. It's a Ultra Slug Hunter Deluxe. It's quite unusual in its fact it's got a very heavy barrel. It's also got a rifled barrel. Most shotguns obviously have a smooth barrel. This is rifled and the reason for that is that if you're using solid uh, shells, the accuracy is meant to be improved and uh, apparently this is meant to be reasonably accurate out to 150 yards. Even Ian is allowed to go after his earlier faux pas. Yay! You got a balloon, <laughs> mate! You got a bloody balloon! <laughs> With the pig now looking like it's been on a raucous hen night in Nottingham, Tim brings out something with a bit of cowboy about it. It looks great fun and is popping those balloons with no problems. The signs are Tim and Roy have had a good time today, but what would they take with them if they were about to jet off on a driven boar hunt? 357 under lever rifle was uh, yeah superb fun. It was uh, yeah it it, uh, it brings the fairground into shooting, doesn't it? It was uh, that was superb. You know, and what a what what better a place to do it? You know, we've got a yeah a thoroughly safe backstop there, um, and we could just play for hours. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, the day's come to an end. It is such fun. It's got such huge knockdown ability and it's, it's very, very accurate. Probably pretty effective on wild boar, but uh, it is such a laugh. An extraordinary day with some extraordinary shots and hardware. From rifle range to shooting ground, last week it was the school's challenge at the Oxford Gun Company. This week, students are foregoing a day of pot noodles, daytime TV and the student union bar in favour of the university's challenge. We're at the Oxford Gun Company where the university championship hosted by Oxford Brooks has attracted entries from universities as far afield as York, Aberystwyth and Plymouth. Contenders for the prizes are the Royal Agricultural College in Sarancester, Harper Adams and Warwickshire College. Now, when we went pheasant shooting with the lads and lass from Sarancester, they were quite punchy about their chances. Let's remind ourselves what they thought of their shooting ability. Best! So, how are they feeling today? Good, uh, missed a few easy ones, but apart from that it's gone really well, so it's good. <laughs> it's not going too badly, shot reasonably well, so I'm reasonably pleased. It's good practice. It's nice to have another competition as well on the um, on the sort of bit of a circuit with the universities, um, and it makes a bit of a nice change. Just you know, shooting the same old playgrounds day and day out for them. The main competition is a 50 bird sporting with two side events: the Browning Rabbit Mania and the Pool Shoot, and there are prizes available for all. Other attractions include driving vehicles over the steep earth buns with both Cotswold ATV and Stratstone Land Rover Cheltenham. 
One of the sponsors is the Clay Pigeon Shooting Association, keen to bring young people into the sport. Well, youngsters, is a bit of a cliche, are the future of the sport, but we're delighted to be involved with the uh, school challenge and the university challenge, um, simply to show our support for that end of the sport and to help to um, give people who are starting the sport at a young age a reference point, really, for the fact that we're the governing body that we're there, and when they continue their shooting beyond school and university, they'll be going into racing competitions and they'll be a member, a member of the association, hopefully. Of course, students, being students, also get up to antics. Please can whoever took it return the NFU flag. Nice to see the NFU is so well loved. At the end of the day, it's the prize giving. Winner of the men's prize is Stuart Hart from Harper Adams. Ladies winner is Rosie Freeth from the Royal Agricultural College. And the team prize goes to Harper Adams. Great end to a fantastic first event. We've had a hundred odd students here, we've had some fantastic scores, great weather and hopefully it will be back in the calendar for next year. And for the next event, which is the Schools Challenge on the 6th of May and the Breed and Festival of Shooting, do come along and join us. If you would like to take part in either the University Challenge or the Schools Challenge events which take place throughout the year, go to www.theschoolschallenge.co UK. Well, we're back next week when we'll be bringing you the opening of the seasons for both Reservoirs and Roebuck. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere on the sky above my head or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a box. Pop your email address into that box and we'll be able to tell you about our weekly programme that's out on Wednesdays from 7pm UK time. Or click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, same place. This has been Field Sports Britain.